Praise God. Claude Bauer is back with you again, hosting this wonderful program. We get an opportunity to produce here in the studios of Super Channel 55 called Pastor Present. It's a simple name. It's a simple intro there, that, that music. It says in times like these, uh, you need a Savior. In times like these, you know the old hymnal uh, song from the church, but it's still true every day. Remember, every 18 years, there's a new generation coming on the scene and growing into maturity. And those songs have a message within them. That's the reason I like them. I like classical music and uh, a lot of different styles of music, but I like, I like a, a song that's wrapped around a message. And uh, talking about a message, we've got a great man of God here today. He has uh, three churches, different places, uh, one church in three locations, and he is doing such an effective work here in Central Florida. All of his churches are right here in Florida, so we'll talk about that in just a moment. Bishop Larry Chester, Pastor uh, Bishop of Citadel of Life Cathedral in Orlando. Yes, sir. Inverness in Plant City, Florida. <laughs> yes, sir. That's, that's us. That is us. Welcome to the program and welcome back. It's an honor to be here. It's a very nice honor to be here. Thank you. I understand you were on with me in the beginning of this station back uh, about 35 years ago. That's right. Yes, sir. Over well, in Leesburg, Florida. That's right. The Leesburg studio there. Yes. Uh, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. And the key to it is we're still here. And yes. you're still here. That's right. Doing a tremendous job. And we thank God for that. Now think about that. Pastor uh, Bishop Chester was was ministering 35 years ago mm -hmm. here in Central Florida. Right. He was born, I believe, in Inverness, yes. right? You know where Inverness is? Over near, uh, what's, what county is that? Citrus uh, County. Citrus County? Citrus County. Right. Uh, Beverly Hills. Crystal uh, River. Crystal River. Yeah. Uh, Trillacoochee. <laughs> no, that, that's not it. But, uh, it's the Wiplacoochee River. Yeah, Wiplacoochee River. Yes. And uh, the power that's powering this television station right now, and probably the lights at your home, comes from that area. So, Edmund is a wonderful place. Our coverage reaches that area, and we're so happy about that. But he was here 35 years ago talking about God yes. and His Word. And so were we. That's right. Obviously, we were in the very early stages of the mm -hmm. station. We're still here, and we're just full of joy today, and I just thought about that. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and I'm glad to reconnect with you. Amen. And I promise you again, it won't be another 35 years. Amen. Right? That's good. That'll be great. <laughs> but if I forget to call you 35 I will call years you. from now, you give me a call. <laughs> That's right? for sure. I won't forget. If we don't be gone. <laughs> Amen. Introduce yourself to the viewers and just welcome them to the program and maybe refer to the first scripture you're going to mention in your sermon today. Okay. Amen. It's, it's, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. Uh, Brother Biles, sure. um, and I was thinking over the 35 years how this station have impacted people all over Citrus County. I think you have about four million so or so uh, listeners, mm -hmm. and just to just to sit here and think about the souls that have been saved, even those that have already gone on to be with the Lord, and the impact this station have done, and how God has honored you, and you're still here. And as I said earlier, looking real good as a man of God. Thank you. Uh, and I just, I am Bishop Larry Chester. Uh, as, you, as you oftentimes, I've uh, already said, we have one church in three locations, uh, all Inverness, Plant City, and Orlando. You have different pastors Different, there? different pastors Bishops, yeah. are pastoring those churches. Um, we, we have a worldwide ministry. We travel, we were in Greece, um, Italy, Tur uh, Turkmenistan, Turkey. We just travel all over Jamaica, uh, ministering the Word of God. And the Lord has really opened doors for us. And we moved from Inverness about 13, 14 years ago because God gave me a vision that um, Orlando was a place that he's really going to do some powerful things in. This city is it's just waiting. It's just like a melting pot. It's ready for a move of God. And God is about to do that in this city. And the word that I'm going to bring to this is very prophetic. It's not just something that we can just go to sleep on. It's, just, it's very exciting and what God is about to do in the midst of the church. And, and you know, a long time ago, we've been, we've been hearing over and over, God is about to do, God is about to do, but we're on the thrust of a move of God like we've never seen before, Praise right God. here in this city. Right. And I believe, I'm, excuse me, go ahead. Mm -hmm, and, and I believe well, with all my heart, mind, and soul. So be it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Yes. And, um, and this, this message today, if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, I assure you, the next 20 minutes, this message will have an impact in your life and answer questions for many of you regarding your spiritual walk with the Lord Amen. and how to return to that first love or the joy of the Lord which is your strength. Bishop Larry Chester is a spirit-filled man who speaks God's Word with integrity and excellence. He has associate degree in theology, 
a bachelor's of ministry degree and a doctor of divinity degree from Jacksonville Theological Seminary. And um, your lovely wife is uh, Lady Tony Chester. Yes, sir. Been married 30 years or more? 36. Yeah, okay, it all goes in a rhythm here, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. And you're going to be opening the Bible, I believe, to what, 2 Timothy? 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 26. All right, let's get into the Word. Amen. Amen. Let me just give intro and a little introduction yeah. about why we're here and what, what, what God is my assignment for today. Um, over 25 years ago, when God called me into the ministry, God called me as a mentor to leaders. And that's what I love to do. I love to mentor leaders and, and build them up in the faith. Um, one of the things I look at in this chapter, this verse of scripture today is how Paul was ministering and mentoring Timothy and letting him know to, be a, to, be a, a, to imitate him in the sense of raising faithful men as well. So let me just start this way by saying this. Many, many of us say that we're living in the last days, which we are. We are living in the last days and the oppression of failure, the oppression and depression of all the things that are happening in the world today, sometimes it gets us in a position where we feel that, you know, all hope is gone. What I just want to say this morning that all hope is not gone. We are, we are on the beginning of something very great that's about to take place in the air, not just here in Orlando, but all over the world. And when I look at the last days, I look at that saying to me, that means that Satan's time is up. That means he don't have the time to do what he used to do. And if that is the case, the verse of scripture that we're talking from today will give us an illustration on what God is going to do before chapter 3 comes in that they're talking about the apostasy. And God is about to build men and women of God up. And I'm a very good, I, I, I love to teach the Word of God. Sometimes I preach, but I love to teach the Word of God. So we're going to try to get in some insights on what Paul was trying to relate to Timothy uh, in these last days and the latter times as he was getting ready to go off the scene and was instilling into Timothy to be strong, be, be vigilant, be powerful in these last days because of what was going to happen. Ministry is going to get tough, but then when, we, when ministry, when things get tough, we have to get tougher than the things that's before us. So Paul was letting him know in that latter verse, verse 26, and I'm going to be reading a verse, few verses of scriptures. Beautiful. Uh, he said that, and I, I, the whole story is about preparing Timothy. The whole story is about getting him ready, and not only getting him ready, but also preparing him to teach other men of the faith. In other words, so that this legacy will continue to go forward, not just stop in one place. And there's one thing I like about vision. We all have our time in vision. And you God give a man a vision, I won't finish my vision. Maybe my children, my grandchildren will finish it. But I'm here for this dispensation to finish the part that God has given me to finish. So Paul was on, this, on his end of his journey. Timothy was just beginning. But in the midst of that, to keep this legacy going, he's saying, okay, Timothy, I don't want you to just stop with where you are. Train faithful men. And that is the key today. Our responsibility and our mandate as a pastor and as a bishop is to train and mentor younger people that when we go on to the glory, uh, then this same legacy will continue to flow and go forward. So what he was saying here in this, in this verse of scripture, and I like verse, verse 26 because it was so powerful. It said, and that they may recover themselves out of the snares of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So he was saying, you train them up, teach them, make sure that they recover and to understand who they are because the enemy loved to keep them in a position of doubt, fear, unbelief, depression, ready to give up hope, but God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can even ask or think. Let me read that same verse out of another translation. It says that they may come to their senses and escape out of the snares of the devil, having been held captive by him, henceforth to do his will or do the work. Now, what, what, what we're looking at here is there are times when the enemy desired to hold us back or keep us from doing the will of God. But the key thing here is what I got out of this was in this passage of scripture, recover in the Greek, in this passage is saying to become sober again, to regain one's senses or uh, to recover self. Now, what, what, where are we here? Where are we now in this dispensation? Because God is a dispensational God. Out of all the things that are going on in the world today, that's bringing oppression and depression and the things that the enemy is trying to pile upon us. It is time, God is about to raise the church of the living God up like never before and bringing us to, causing us to understand who we really are in him. Causing us by revelation to become sober, uh, also to regain our senses 
and also it says to recover ourselves. How is that happening? Well, the book of Romans chapter 12 says in verse 2, be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And if our minds are being transferred to, transferred to the will of God, then we have a great understanding of what God is doing at this time and season. No, 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 no. The church is never down. The church is always up. So what he's saying here is when he talked to, to, to Peter in the gospel, he said, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So we're in position right now to recover ourselves, to recover who we are, to recover the person that God has invented us, created us to be. I go all the way back to the book of Genesis uh, 126, where God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and he breathed in man's nostrils the gift of life, and man become a living soul. My terminology of that is God breathed himself into us, right. and we become a living soul. So the God that we serve not only is in heaven, but through us he's walking here on earth. And when we discover or recover who we are, not just recovering cars or these other things that we want to recover, but to recover who the man, the man that God breathed himself into, then we're going to see change like never before. I, I, I'm reminded of the scripture where Jesus told him this in the Gospels. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. We're in a position right now when we understand who we are in Christ Jesus and we can recover what God has placed in the, in the midst of us. We can speak to the wind. We can speak to the air. We can speak to various things. We can command things. We can declare and decree things, and it will come to pass. But what we want to do is recover that. So Paul was telling Timothy, son, don't just teach them, but let them know who they are in Christ Jesus. Let them know it is not them, but it is Christ living on the inside of them. And I have some other notes that I, I want to read out Please. to you because it's, it's, it's very good to understand this. Because we've been in church, I've been in church now for the last 30 years, all my life basically. And I've seen things come and I've seen things go. And not that we want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but we want to understand what our foreparents done. It was good, but it wasn't finished. It's because God is a dis dispensational God. And God moves and works and do certain things in dispensations. Now we're at the peak now, again, where we say that we're in the last days. If this is the case, this is why we see so much things, this is why we see so many things are happening in the world today. But in the reason being is because Satan knows his time is short. So mm. if his time is short, that means he's he's about he's about to, it's coming to an end. Whatever he was doing or trying to do is coming to an end. Now the church of the living God is about to rise up like never before. We are about to see some tremendous things happening in the spirit. It is going to be supernatural. Uh, it is mind boggling what God has given us in visions and dreams about what's, what's about to happen. And I say, yeah, some of you may say, well, yeah, we have heard this over and over and over again, but I'm telling you, we're at the threshold. We are at the peak of something great. You may not, this day may not end before you might see a mighty miracle take place in your life because the men and women of God are coming to their senses. They're coming to know who they are in Christ Jesus. No more just having church as usual. We're coming to a place in God where we've never been before. The book of Isaiah makes a statement. He says that God will hide some things, not from us, but for us. Mm -hmm. And he kept these things secret for such a time as this. And where we are right now, praise God, we're in that peak, a brink of God doing a mighty work. Scripture says in Corinthians, and I know I'm going to go back to this in a minute, but it says in Corinthians, if Satan would have known who Christ was, he never would have crucified him. God hid that from him. Okay? Now what God is doing to us, God has hid some things for us today that we're going to rise up and be the church like we've never been before. And that's what I, and how is this going to happen? Through divine revelation. We're understanding who we are in Christ Jesus. This is where we are today. Here's some, here's some notes that I wrote uh, on last, night, last evening. For many years, uh, people, are, people, have, people have gone to church to just simplify or appease their religious conscience. We cannot afford to do that anymore just to go to church on Sundays, just to say I've been to church. We're not in that position no more. I mean, because I believe that there's more, we, we have to have in our minds, there's more to God than just going to church. All right? Then, I, then we have here says, when you discern your hour of visitation, your days in the wilderness are over. When we can discern what God is doing, and right now at this moment, this is an hour of visitation. When you can discern that hour of visitation, that God is bringing your revelatory word, your, your days in the wilderness are over. That's when you, or you're coming up out of something that has had you bound for a long time. And also, when we, can, we can't afford to just stay in church like that. And also, when you can discern your visitation, your days of struggle will come to an end. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. If you can just discern how, what God is doing in the atmosphere, 
as I was talking earlier, how God has empowered us through His Holy Spirit, how God has empowered us through Himself, how God Himself is living within us on the earth. We are the gods of the, on this earth, small g. We, we are the ones that God has commanded to take His Word. We are the voice of God. We are the rhema. We are, the, we are, we are what God has spoken about. So when we speak, things have to listen. When you speak, things have to come under your command. Not only that, but uh, revelation to your spirit, man, is what common sense is, praise God, to, a, to the natural man. Revelation to your spirit, man, mm. is what common sense is to the natural man. So when your spirit can receive the revelation knowledge of God, it becomes great and it has the ability to, the, to, to do just what God was doing while he was here on earth, what Jesus was doing when he was here on earth. So if I can get revelation to my spirit, because we oftentimes say man is a triune being, he's spirit, body, and he's soul. He's a spirit that, that possesses a soul and lives in a body. And this is the part that God wants to touch. Revelation must come through your spirit, but it comes through the mind gates to go into the spirit man to give you what God will have. That's why it's so important that men have to be transformed by the renewing of their mind. There has to be a transformation of the mind. The old things must be passed away. Behold, God is all bringing all things new. Why? Because he is a dispensational God and there are certain things happen in certain dispensation. I'm telling you with all the spirit that's in me that we're about to see something that we've never, ever, ever seen before happen on this earth. Praise God. Just the other day we heard killing in the schools. Just the other day, I, this morning, I heard killing in the schools. We have all kind of tragical things that are happening. Uh, the Bible speaks of all the bad things that's going to be happening in the last days. But the Bible also tells me in the book of Romans, he said, where sin abound, grace doeth much more abound. So in the midst of that, God is about to do something great in the midst of our city and around the world, okay? All your circumstances are time related, but faith breaks the law of time. Faith breaks the law of time. Faith has the ability to go into your future and bring what you believe in God for into your presence. Right. It breaks the law of time. I reminded of the lady that was sitting there and asked Jesus for some bread. And Jesus told her, he made this statement. He said, it is not meat to give the bread to dogs. Call them a dog, Gentile. But the woman said, yes, Lord. But even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. And Jesus said, what great faith that this woman had. What was he saying here? This woman, it was not time for the Gentiles to be saved or anything like that because Apostle Paul had not whatever. But she went beyond, she transcended time mm -hmm. and went beyond and told Jesus himself, it is not meat. When Jesus told her it's not meat to give the people's bread to the dogs, she said the dogs eat the crumbs from the table. So we have an accelerating faith that's taking place now. Well, we're reaching out into the future and bringing that future to the right now, to the present. But we're not going to have to be begging God or get in a closet somewhere, but we could be able to speak the word and God will allow that thing to happen. Why? Because we're coming, we're recovering who we are. We're understanding who, what the purpose of man. We are understanding the design of man that God has placed us on this earth. Not only that, but it is, it is time to become extremely engaged. Mm with what God is doing in the world today. We gotta get engaged to it. Um, our two word songs are good, our worship is good because I, I, I oftentimes say, wherever there's worship, there's warfare. But it's time to get engaged. Faith without works is dead. The kingdom of heaven suffers violent. The violent takes it by force. And as I train leaders to be first good in their homes, be then in the church, and to have them have good integrity and character, this is what I want to place within us today to understand when we understand who we are in Christ Jesus, we have the ability by the powers of God to recover all. Why? Because I know who I am. I know who God is. And not only that, a couple more and then I'm going to be, I'm going to be done. It is critical that we, we be active, actively involved and engaged in every spiritual thing in the kingdom of God. That's important. That is very important. There's a level of anointing according to, the, according to the Gospels that will attack the very gates of hell. And the Bible says the very gates of hell should not prevail against it. And, and, and this is where we are right now. We are anointed to attack the very gates of hell. Why? Because we have recovered all. We have recovered. We understand who we are uh, in Christ Jesus. And that makes, that makes a lot of sense. 
So you think about, as I was saying, many people have been attacked by the arrows of Satan and have not recovered. But Psalm 91 said, we should not worry about the arrow that flies by night. And what God is saying here to us today is that the power that he's in place within us, not only are we going to recover things per se, but we are going to know who we are in Christ Jesus. And I am excited about what God is doing in the midst of the body of Christ, in the midst of the young leaders, in the midst of even some of our senior leaders. The apostolic movement is going forth like never before. Uh, the prophetic word is moving forth like never before. This is the season to see what God has spoken come to pass. It's, come, it's right before our eyes, and I am so excited about what the Lord is doing in the midst of us. We joined into India a couple of years ago, and thousands and thousands of people were there, and how the Lord is just pouring out his blessing, pouring out his spirit uh, in other countries as well as our country as well. But I'm saying when the body of Christ recover and understand who we are, then we're going to see the magnificent power of God move mightily. My last thought, and I am going to be through, we all, us preachers always say, I'm in it, I'm in it, but we always have something to say. But when David got back from, and found out that Ziglag was all destroyed, they took their wives, they took the children, they took everything. David had to re recover who he was, and when he get in, went into the presence of the Lord, and he asked God, God, should I pursue? And God told him, that pursue the Amorites, and God told him, yes, pursue. Pursue them and recover all. It is our responsibility, young men, young men, young men and women, and church of the living God, that we understand who we are in these last days and the power and the potential that God has given us and that we go forward like we've never been, for, like we've never been before and get everything back that the enemy has taken from us. We serve an awesome God and his grace is there. I don't care how low you have went, back, went down, God has the power to bring you back up. I don't care how many mistakes that you've made in life, God is saying, come back to me. I love you. And his hand is reached out to all of us to say, yes, I love you. And, the same, and what, what we do is we learn by mistakes and we move forward because you've recovered everything. I want to pray with you for the next Praise couple God. of minutes thank you, Jesus. before we leave the air. Father, we thank you and we bless you for this opportunity to reach out to these millions of people all through Central Florida. We thank you, God, for this powerful man of God, for the Claw Bowers and his staff. And we pray, God, that someone this morning will give their life to you and that you will be glorified for you said in your word that the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. And we decree and declare right now that the power of God will come upon leaders today. Fallen leaders, leaders that are going forth, build them up, bring them back as they recover who they are in Christ Jesus. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. A wonderful word, uh, Bishop Larry Chester, Citadel of Life, Cathedral Church, Orlando one in Inverness and also a church in Plant City. And uh, we'll give you contact information in just a moment. You can connect with him in these locations or those who are in leadership in, in those areas. And again, talking on the subject today, and I think many of you are watching this program and you're in that position where you've been thinking about pondering, how can I recover where I once was or go beyond that? How can I recover? How can it be redeemed? How can I deal with this issue? in my life. And uh, it's very clear that second in Second Timothy there, 226, that the bishop referred to, was talking to Christians and mm -hmm. about Christians, and that they may come to their senses. Mm -hmm. This is not the heathen. Right. Okay. And escape out of the snare of the devil. Mm -hmm. So I guess you could say maybe you're snared by mm -hmm. the devil. We all have the opportunity every day to get snared mm -hmm. by the devil having been held captive by him, I guess, doing the will of God. Mm -hmm. So you can be a Christian and be captive yes. of the snare of the enemy. And you can recover all. Mm -hmm. And if you go into the scripture, it says, it talks about that right there in Second Timothy. Recovering means to become sober again mm -hmm. and to regain one's senses and to recover self. This is about recovering yourself, not your, uh, your car that was repossessed. This is about what happens on the inside. Yes. If you get the inside right, the cars will come. The yes. outside will take care of itself. That's yes. been my experience. Most of all, it's established in the Word of God. So Amen. today, uh, you know, we're friends here. Amen. We don't know who's watching this program, but That's God right. does. Yes. But this word recovery resonates with you. You've been asking God, how can I ever get back to where I once was? Mm -hmm. Well, if you've lost the joy of the Lord, I tell you, 
you need to recover. And you can. Yes. Become sober. First, read First Timothy 2.26 and get a copy of maybe a DVD or audio of this program and watch it over and over. This pastor came today with his word about recovery. Praise God. In the spiritual realm, right? Yes. Yeah, any final closing comments to wrap this up today? Yes, I want to say that, you know, many times when, just when you mentioned the snares, um, Satan can't possess us, but he sure can try to oppress us. And when we acknowledge, listen, I failed, I made a mistake, that is the beginning of recovering, acknowledging. And then from that point, the grace of God will pick us up and take us where we need to go. There is nothing impossible for God. There is, you can't go as for where God can't find you. You can care how far you go back. And that's the message for the world today. God is not a God that's sitting there waiting to beat you down, but His grace is just saying, come. Come unto me, all you laden and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. That powerful statement that resonated in the, in the ear of Jesus when there was a crowd and someone spoke up, Son of David, Lord God, Son of David, have mercy on me. I tell you, <laughs> Jesus said, I will. Yes. I will. Yes. And he did. I tell you, God, God loves to heal. He's already healed by the stripes, but he sure loves to give mercy. Amen. And to see you recover. Yes. David recovered many times. Yes. Peter recovered many times. Yes. And the Lord used him to help establish the foundation of the revelation of the Christian church today. Amen. So all through the Bible, it's about recovery. Yes. You can be, you can be drunk with the things of this world. Mm -hmm. That's what it says, become sober. Yes. And come to your senses. And that's what you are today. Some of you, you're at, you're at that point. I'm ready to sober up. Amen. That means giving up certain things. That means doing things other than just going to church mm -hmm. and saying, I've checked that off my list. What about on Monday morning at 5 o'clock? Maybe get your Bible out and get along with God. Yes. Talk to Him. That's sobering up. Amen. You have to step out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Yes. The Lord will come by, yes. but He won't grab you by the neck. There you go. The devil will, <laughs> but not the Lord. Amen. 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 Invite people to your church here in uh, Orlando. Orlando. And we'll mention the other extended churches. Yes, sir. We are. We have a services on Sunday mornings um, at Econ at the Econ Res. Um, property it's begin at 10 o'clock 10 o'clock life enrichment service and then at 11 o'clock we start our, our regular Sunday morning worship service Wednesday night Bible study at 7 o'clock a tremendous Bible study we are in the book of Romans and going through the whole book of Romans and God is doing a tremendous work in that giving us revelation on what that's that information on the screen will also take you probably to a website that has information about the other churches yes. in Inverness and Plant City so yes. you're welcome the pastor to give you an invitation he's been in ministry over 30 years yes. He was on this station on a program almost 35 years ago. Yes. So he is not only recovered, but he has stayed true and faithful. And those of you who have as well, and you're on top of the mountain today, God bless you. Stay there and join us again next time for Pastor President. Amen.